Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's um, a joy to worship our Lord God in truth and spirit this morning. And we are thankful and grateful that uh, we have this opportunity to meet together even on this platform to worship our God, our dear God. Um, I would like to thank everybody on uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this morning uh, a, a portion of God's word that may uh, we're praying that may it may edify us and learn something from it. Especially, I thank the elders for giving us the opportunity to uh, to do this uh, from uh, time to time, and um, it's really an, an honor and. We are humbled in doing this thing. Please bear with me this morning as we um, uh, uh, go into God's word. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, offer a short prayer before we go on to our lesson. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, you are our God and you are our creator. You are our uh, good God that gives us everything that we have. We ask, dear God, this at this time to open our hearts and our mind so that um, we may be blessed with the things that we are about to talk about. I pray, dear God, that you will help your servant to deliver the message in an understanding way so that we could all understand it. Thank you, Father God, for all the goodness that you've made. Thank you for Jesus who made all of these things possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to thank Brother Alex for reading our text this morning, a very short text, but uh, very important. We started on Ephesians 1, uh, verse 3, says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. This morning, we will be talking about the blessings that we receive from our Father in heaven. It is God's will that we as his children be blessed, both physically and spiritually. The word blessing in Ephesians 1.3 is defined as a favor or gift bestowed by God, thereby bringing happiness. Since God is the one acting in this verse, we can say that God has spoken good things about us. He declared good things for our benefit. The good things that God has decreed for us are probably beyond our ability to number. In the Bible, it tells us that we are a finished work in God's sight. We have been fully given access to God and to all his promises through the blood of Christ. Finished work here doesn't mean that God is done with us. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 tells us that for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. It means that we are completely blessed. Lacking in nothing, first and foremost, spiritual blessing, which are unseen, and the physical or the material blessings that are seen. Because of the love of our Father in heaven through Christ that offered himself to us at the cross of Calvary to make things new for us on heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. God has blessed us with many physical blessings. These blessings are so many in number that it would, not, it would be impossible for us to count them. We can enumerate some of the major blessings that we have. On Philippians 4, verse 19, it said, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. So what are these physical blessings we receive from God? We can enumerate them. Uh, we are blessed with our families. 
It's on Proverbs 19, 14, on your own study. Um, for the limited time that we have, we we have to just look at it for ourselves. But it's but we are blessed with our families. And also on Psalms 127, 3, tells us about how our children have been, have been a blessing from God. Another, we are blessed with prosperity and health. The third John 2 tells us about the blessing of our health and the wealth that we have. We are also blessed with the food and clothing. Matthew 6, 25 to 26 tells us all about this, that we are more important than the birds, than the grass and everything, because God's provide us all of this. God has blessed us with a beautiful world we live in. The heavens declare the glory of God. His work, His handiwork is seen everywhere. You go out today, the, the sun is shining, and spring is almost here. The world is so beautiful, and we own all of this to our God, our Father, who gave all of this to us. It's written on Psalms 19, 1 to 3. So, but how about spiritual blessings? These blessings, spiritual blessings, are the wholeness of our spiritual being, or they are the essence of our spiritual life. These are the blessings of our soul. It comprises with our love in our heart, the trust, the wisdom, the courage, the values, the commitments, the gratitudes, the focus, the sincerity, the bearings and directions, happiness, faithfulness, peace, and more. Christians are known for the praise, God bless you. And as often as we can utter these words of comfort and assurance, we always say, God, please bless us today. We pray, and the word blessing will surely be mentioned. We may, for a fact, enjoy some of these blessings, but if we look a little deeper, we can only see the physical or the material aspects of those blessings we are asking. But how about the spiritual blessing? How will we know that we have them? As I mentioned earlier, spiritual blessings are a heavenly comfort that we can enjoy from our Father in heaven who gives willingly with abundance. As we examine our lives, we often see that for one reason or the other, we are not blessed spiritually as we should be. When this happens, some people, the first thing that they, that they do is to blame God. They ask God, God, why? Rather than taking the blame themselves. Proverbs 19, 3 tells us, People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. But Paul answers that on Romans 9.20. He says, well, who do you think you are to talk back like, to God like that? Can an object that has made, that was made, say to his maker, why did you make me like this? The truth is, when we accept the responsibility for the lack of spiritual blessing in our lives, we may reveal either that there are sins in our lives or we can say that there's an obstruction somewhere that we have either placed or allowed to be placed between ourselves and these blessings. And with this in, in mind, let's consider the subject obstruction or spiritual blessings or as we titled it this morning, a blessing blockers. I can't find any good images that would uh, go through it, but this is the, the closest that I could get. They, I call them spiritual blessing blockers. And in doing so, we might recognize we might recognize some of these obstructions in our lives. And as we aim to remove or avoid them, 
so that we might be blessed as God's want us to be blessed. First, what is obstruction? We all know this. Obstruction means a hindrance that makes movement or flow difficult or impossible. It is a blockage, a clot. At this subject, it is a blockage or there's a clot for God's blessings. When a water line, when our water line is obstructed by foreign materials or by rust or mud, the flow of water will stop and it will be a big problem in our daily lives. When an obstruction or blockage of blood going to our brain, it can cause a stroke that may cause damage to our body. When there's an obstruction of the flow of blood into the arteries of the heart, it can lead to heart attack. Even on the road, when we see obstructions on the road and they place barricades and blockades, that will cause traffic jam and it would impede and delay our planned destination. It's the same principles, brothers and sisters, that happens into our spiritual lives. When there are blockages or obstructions, being spiritually fruitful will be difficult or will be impossible to achieve. So let's examine some of these called blessing blockers. Number one on the list, selfishness. Selfishness, selfish people only think of themselves. It is self-seeking, self-serving, lack of consideration to others. Selfish people only think of themselves. We remember the story about this rich man, Luke 12, 17 to 19, said, And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And she said, Ah, I will do this. I will turn down my burn, barns and build bigger, larger ones, big and larger ones. And there I will store all my grains and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years so I can relax, I can drink, eat, and be merry. We will notice that this man in this parable is materially sufficient. Or we can say today that he is filthy rich. But for being selfish, his life was cut short that night. Said, so is the one who lays up treasure for himself, is not rich toward God. Therefore, losing his spiritual blessing. Mark 8.36 tells us, For what shall profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Other terms for being selfish is egotistical, being proud or conceited, narcissistic, or self centered. Individuals who are selfish show a lack of love for those around them. 1 John 3 17 tells us if anyone has the world's goods and and finding out what we can do to help them through our sincere effort in encouraging them. Focusing on others is another way to humility. Humility is gaining a true perspective of your worth based on your relationship to God. But remember, Luke 7.10 tells us that we are just unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Philippians 2, verses 3 and 5, Paul advises us, do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Someone asked me, how about, how about uh, when you take care of yourself? How about when you take time for yourself? These are, we can call them self-care, but I would like to make it clear that self-care 
is not selfishness. Example of self-care is when you give time to yourself to relax, to regain lost energy, exercise. Meditation is one type of self-care for better mindfulness when we focus on, on our awareness. I can go on and on with different types of self-care as long as it wouldn't harm your inner self because keeping in mind that your body is God's temple. Selfishness, remember, prevents you from giving yourself while self-care enables it. Self-care builds you strength and helps you, brings out the best in you. Next on the list is prayerlessness. This is not only the complete disregard for prayer, but it also means the failure to pray less than we need to. Since all spiritual blessings come from God, if we never take time to speak to Him and petition Him to bless our efforts, how can we expect to obtain them? We have a loving Father who desires to bless us, but we also have a Father who desires to hear from us concerning these blessings. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Prayerless people are also disobedient people. Therefore, it is a sin if we don't pray. We are commanded to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Luke 18.1 says, Men ought to pray and not to faint. Failure to pray is a direct disobedience to the command and the will of God. If you do not have a consistent prayer life, you wouldn't be encouraged in obeying God's word, God's will, and God's plan for your life. And because of your failure to ask, we will not receive these blessings. James 4.2 tells us that you desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Failure to plead. Prayer to pray leads to easy temptation. Jesus told Peter on Matthew 26, 41, he, he told him, Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The prophet Jeremiah tells us that prayerless people will not prosper. Jeremiah 10, 21 tells us, that for the shepherds are foolish and do not inquire of the Lord. Therefore, they have not prospered and all their flock is scattered. Many people set obstructions or blockages of prayerlessness between themselves and spiritual blessing. If we are not being blessed as God would have us to be, let us look at our prayer life. The best way to combat prayerlessness is to remind ourselves how God has been gracious to us and generous to us. Don't let your heart be ungrateful. Don't let doubt, fear, or anger rule your heart. Turn to God right away. Jesus said, come to me who are labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 says, but how do we come to the Lord? By prayer. So pray. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So how do we draw near to God? By prayer. So let's pray. Third, worldliness. Worldliness is the sense that could involve many Subcategories, materialism, the ambition of playing treasures on earth, subscribing to the ideology of passionate desire for wealth, 
or, or subscribing uh, to the ideology of eat, drink, and be merry. Sorry. Such worthy persons are like beastly creatures without reason who function more on the level of animals than rational human beings. Their only concern is for material values or their, it's called ordinary life rather than a spiritual existence. Whether we want it, we, whether we want to admit it or not, worldliness reveals the inward life of man. 1 John 2, 15 tells us, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. John is saying that the love of the Father in heaven is not in the person who loves the world because no man can serve two masters, Matthew 6, 24. Either he will hate the other one and love the other or he will be devoted to the other and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Worldliness is a blockage. It does not please God. Romans 8, 7, 8, 7 and 8. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in flesh cannot please God. James 4.4 4 says, You adulterous people, don't you know that the friendship in the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. It is the flesh over spirit existence worldly people dwell into. A way of life that is pleasure driven, that contradicts God's moral standard and surely leads to disastrous life and destruction of the soul. Ephesians 5.3 tells us, But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. In order to get us off worldliness is to have a heart of contentment, always being thankful for what every day brings for everything is from God. First Timothy 6, 6 and 7, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. Philippians 4, 12 and 13, Paul tells us the secret. I said, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to be plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, because I can do this through him who gives me strength. The secret of being content is in Jesus Christ, who gives us strength to keep us going in all circumstances. Next, unfruitfulness. Unfruitfulness is being barren, unable to produce good results and satisfaction, which means unprofitable. This is unprofitable when it comes to our spiritual well-being. There is a close relationship between not being spiritually blessed and being unfruitful. Being unfruitful is not spiritually maturing, always remaining a baby in faith, needing milk all the time as a supplement and not solid food given only to those who are maturing in their spiritual work, which results in blessings and claim. Matthew 13, 22 said, we reminded us we can relate this unfruitfulness from the parable of the sower. It says, as for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world, which is worldliness, and the deceitfulness of riches is the deception, choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. In this case, it becomes useless. Unfruitfulness comes not from not abiding in Christ. Abiding here is used as a verb or an action word, meaning staying, remaining, holding on, living on, 
enduring persistence to be always with Christ. No faltering allegiance to Jesus. No thinking twice. No dilly-dally. No CISO attitude. No yo-yo feeling. No hesitation. Not short-lived. But it should be permanent. It should be perpetual. It should be steadfast. John 15, 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. To be fruitful is to constantly abide with the Lord. Let others know about the good news of Jesus, his love, his peace, his comfort we have in our lives. Put your faith into action. Use your God-given talent for the work of His kingdom by serving His church and serving others. Be a good influence to others. Matthew 5, 14, 16 said, Let your light shine among men so they might see your good works and good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Just bear with me. There's another one. Number five is unfaithfulness. It's defined an untrue heart. We are being unfaithful in our relationship with God if we do not trust Him to direct our ways and insist to do it our way. We are being unfaithful if we disobey God's commandments. Unfaithfulness cannot please God. We are created to obey, honor, worship, and please God. Being unfaithful is not obeying God. It dishonors God, and our worship is worthless and pointless. Therefore, our existence is not pleasing to God. Hebrews 11.6, that it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. We are being unfaithful if we don't serve God wholeheartedly. Deuteronomy 11, 13 tells us, So if you faithfully obey the commandments that I am giving you today, which is to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, All of us as faithful Christians should strive to uphold, support, and encourage marriages. Those of us who are married, we need to work hard building up and keeping up our marriages. We need to remain faithful to the promises that we made. If we reject those promises, surely that goes the same way to showing what we think about God's promises to us. If we, are not un if we are unfaithful to our spouse, surely it reflects our unfaithfulness to God. More than that, the God who made us, who saved us, who loves us, wants godly marriages. Hebrews 13.4 says, Give honor to marriages and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. We are unfaithful if we don't show our love to our brothers and sisters. 1 John 4.21 tells us, If anyone says, I love God, yet he hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given up his, this command, Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Finally, in all circumstances, let us remain faithful to God and unto others. Proverbs 3, 3, 4 tells us, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And then you will win favor as and a good name in the sight of God and man. There are 
brothers and sisters, there are numerous obstructions and blockages that stand between ourselves and the blessing that God wants us to have. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Therefore, anything God gives to us is good. He will never give us anything that will harm us. When God gives us a spiritual blessing, He is giving us more of Himself. And He blesses our soul. If we desire blessings from God, we must do what we can. I repeat, we must do what we can to remove these blockages. Let us always be aware and watch how we live our lives as Christians. So, from selfishness to selflessness, from prayerlessness to prayerfulness, from unworldliness, from worldliness to unworldliness, from unfruitfulness, let's be have fruitfulness, from unfaithfulness to faithfulness. Psalms 119, 1 to 5, and I would like to thank Brother Pete and Sister Faith for singing the song before the message. Blessed are they. It says, Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. And all oh, my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. Amen. And how time flies so quickly during these days. We've already passed. We're, we're ending on January. And tomorrow is another start of a brand new month. For those who would like to remove and destroy those strongholds that block our blessings from God. I invite you now to come and renew wholeheartedly your faith, your love, your commitment, your trust, your values, your gratitude, your happiness, and your peace to our loving Father. Let it be known so that we can pray for you right now. Our Lord Jesus Christ is just waiting for you to open your heart, and he will never, ever forsake you for those who come to him and seek him. And for those who have not yet answered the call of the good news of Jesus Christ, why delay? Recognize that you're a sinner and repent from your sins. Believe in Christ Jesus, that he is your Savior and King, and be baptized for the remissions of your sins. Remember that he is the only way, he is the only truth, and the only life that is worth living for. Please let it be known. We can all pray for you right now. And help you in your next step if you decide with all your heart to join the family of God through Jesus Christ. As we prepare to sing our invitation song. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Praise be to God.